Come on in, guys. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about five Survivor challenges that are basically just torture. Survivor's had some seriously creative challenges over the years. From the physical to the whimsical, Survivor's challenge department is the best in the business at creating challenges that test the players mentally and physically, or at least their ability to spell. But sometimes they get a little sadistic. Yes, Survivor occasionally apparently looks to medieval torture devices for challenge inspiration, if these five challenges are anything to go by. I mean, there have been some pretty intense challenges over the years, but these are next level. I mean, we're talking full-blown John Kramer here. Now, I'm not sure what Jeff's problem is. Why does he do this? Does he just really like pushing the survivors to their limits? Or is there something deeper going on here? Does Jeff Probst worship pain? Well, I would never imply that, but who's to say? Whatever the motive, it's produced some strange and creative challenges over the years, so let's count them down. Here are five survivor challenges that are literally just torture. At number five is the This Much Challenge seen in Survivor Korong and Survivor Triple H. In this challenge, the players have to hold weighted discs between two posts, which are spread out just enough that you can only hold the discs up by applying outward force with your fingertips. This is an endurance challenge designed to be both physically and mentally taxing, as your fingers go numb within minutes and the inability to ever get the discs into a stable position would be incredibly frustrating. On top of that, if you let the disc slide down, recovery is both difficult and risky. Adjusted for every individual survivor's height and wingspan, this challenge comes down to T-pose as long as possible. Who is the biggest T-poser? Well, that would be one of Southeast Michigan's best bounty hunters, Jason, who went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, uh, finger to finger with Aubrey for a whopping 75 minutes in Ko Rong with Probst cheerleading from the sidelines all along the way. You gotta dig! Those who are best at this challenge find creative ways to keep the blood flowing without using their arms, or they just use their thumb to kind of prop up the disc a little. When this challenge returned a few seasons later in Triple H with much larger discs, it didn't last nearly as long. Coming down to a showdown between Ashley and Devin that ended when Devin parlayed his imminent dropping out into a shoulder massage from Ashley. Okay, calm down there, Laura Moret. I like nice flats, nice shoulders. This is a challenge I'd love to see again. It's incredibly punishing for the players and a true test of willpower, but not super painful for the audience to watch. Numbers four through one? Well, there are saw traps less painful to watch. At number four is the final immunity challenge in Survivor Fiji, Hanging by a Thread. The first of several water-based challenges on this list, this is basically all the excitement of contorting your body into an unnatural position, mixed with the fun of dangling over a ledge, with the added bonus of a stream of water obnoxiously trickling onto your face. And if all that wasn't enough, like some sort of deranged dungeon master, Jeff Saw will turn a crank to increase the angle of the platform they're laying on by five degrees every five minutes, meaning the difficulty will literally crank up each time you settle into a groove. They're really gilding the lily on this one, aren't they? Anything else you want to add, Jeff? You sure you don't want to like throw some piranhas in that water or something? This was not a super long lasting challenge, although perhaps longer than you might expect. Cassandra drops out first, lasting an impressive 15 minutes, and Earl and Yao Man aren't far behind, making it to the 20 minute mark, the 55 degree mark, and the very sore wrist mark. Earl actually had a pretty clever, albeit losing strategy here, leaning off to the side as much as possible to avoid that stream of water. Dreams winning this challenge directly led to what was at the time one of the most controversial moments in Survivor history as he'd promised Yao Man that if he won immunity at the final four, he'd give the necklace to Yao Man, because Yao had given him the truck he won at the car reward challenge a few rounds earlier. Of course, Dreams did not give Yao Man the necklace, directly resulting in Yao Man's elimination moments later. I mean, kind of hard to blame Dreams after this challenge, though. Maybe if the final immunity was like catching balls one-handed or something, but enduring a torture rack? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. What makes this one so cruel for me is all of the elements put together. Individually, they're difficult, but not super punishing. But like a fine cocktail expertly mixed, 
all of the elements complement each other perfectly, resulting in a strong, flavorful drink, a multi-dimensional mix of spicy and savory that is pleasantly bittersweet and delightfully aromatic. Uh, so sorry, I mean a pretty cool challenge. At number 3 are the final immunity challenges from Survivor Thailand and Survivor Amazon. These are technically two separate challenges, slip through your fingers and willpower respectively, but philosophically very similar, although the Thailand iteration is by far the more famous and more painful. Perhaps a punishment for producing such an underwhelming season so early in the show's lifetime? I don't know. In Thailand's challenge, the final three assume a traditional Thai pose locked into what can only be described as some sort of bizarre pain cage from a Silent Hill game, also holding three coins in between their fingers on each hand. If you drop all of your coins, you're out. Well, holding on to money might be difficult for some Survivor winners, but not Brian Heidick, who endures 12 long minutes in what I'd argue is the most painful Survivor challenge ever, other than watching Jack and Jill. Its location, however, is genuinely breathtaking, taking place in a torchlit cave at night, which not coincidentally probably also increased the difficulty level quite a bit. All that fire in a relatively enclosed space probably made this challenge pretty hot. Not a problem for Iceman Heidek over here, I don't think he feels sensations, but Clay and Jan probably weren't having such a great time. In Amazon, it's fairly similar. The final three stand on a perch, holding a decorative headdress above their heads that is attached to their necks via a beaded collar. Should they lean the headdress too far in any one direction, they'll be decapitated. Up. Oh, wait, that was actually just the version of this challenge in Matthew's dreams. Ma is creepy. This is creepy. This is creepy. In reality, the headdress being attached to your neck just ensured that you couldn't stretch your arms out too much. You're basically left balancing on a perch holding your headdress at the most uncomfortable distance above your head as possible. At least in this version, the final three all got to play dress up beforehand though, decorating their bodies with a variety of paints, bones, and feathers. And for Mateo over here, well, he's got a very specific spot in mind he'd like to decorate. Now what's this, like some sort of crotch protector? I, I don't think it's a cup. What, uh, what kind of challenge do you think this is going to be, Matt? At number two is the last gasp challenge, which is basically just a drowning simulator. This is a classic and very infamous survivor challenge, so I was shocked to learn that it's only been seen a scant three times. In Palau, Micronesia, and Karamoan, and each time is incredibly difficult to watch. The rules are as simple as they come. You get in the water, hold onto a grate, and wait for the tide to rise. This part isn't so hard. Well, unless you're Janu. But once the tide rises, you'll be gasping for breath through the grate. Eventually, the tide will rise just above the grate, meaning you've got to essentially push your face through the bars or create a makeshift snorkel with your hands in order to continue drawing breath. The Micronesia version of this challenge is particularly uncomfortable to watch, as James, Jason, and Ozzy all very impressively last over an hour, making this a true test of willpower and calmness under pressure. And I gotta give props to Jason for winning this one. Anyone who wins this challenge deserves some praise. But besting Prime Ozzy in any water-based challenge is a true feat. The boy may not be able to tell idols from sticks, but man, can he breathe through a grate. I mean, if this were a 39-day game of breathing through a grate instead of a 39-day game of social politics and strategy, he'd be king. Speaking of people who are great at this challenge, the most impressive performance ever in this challenge is easily Brenda's in Karamoan. She just posts up at the start and literally does not move an inch the entire time, as challenge beasts like Malcolm, Andrea, and Cochrane all drop out one by one by one. She's so in the zone probably daydreaming about not voting for Dawn at final tribal council, that she doesn't even know she's won. So Jeff sends human golden retriever Eddie in to alert her. No, who's a good boy? The most torturous challenge ever on Survivor is the spit it out challenge from Survivor Nicaragua and Survivor Redemption Island, otherwise known as Spin Cycle. Another drowning simulator slash demented carnival ride, this challenge entails strapping three of your tribe mates onto a giant wheel, spinning them around so that their heads get submerged underwater, then while still in motion, having them spit out whatever water they've collected in their mouths into a little tube. 
Once the tube is full of water, the tribe can move on to the next portion of the challenge. Not so bad if you're a wheel spinner, pretty terrible if you're a wheel spinny. In this challenge's first iteration in Nicaragua, two different strategies emerged, with LaFleur spinning Brenda, Purple Kelly, and Other Kelly around literally as fast as possible, while Espada went slow and steady, really making Holly, Alina, and Eve feel the drowning. Espada's strategy actually paid off here, giving them a lead that Tyrone and Benry ultimately failed to capitalize on, leading to an upset LaFleur victory that almost drowns Brenda. This challenge came back the following season for Redemption Island, again for tribal immunity. This is the challenge Zapatera throws to ultimately eliminate Russell Hans, giving a flailing Omentepe momentum that in hindsight probably wasn't such a great idea from the brain trust over here on Team Purple. I'm actually somewhat surprised this challenge even returned for Redemption Island, what with the obvious safety risks. And moving forward, I'm guessing cooler, liability-minded heads prevailed, and that's why we haven't seen it again. But it's a shame it's basically remembered as a footnote in the whole Zapatera throwing a challenge to vote off Russell saga, rather than for the creative, frightening, surprisingly strategic medieval torture chamber that it is. Now with all that said, let us never speak of any of these horrifying challenges ever again. Got nothing else for ya. To help me spit out videos with greater accuracy than Purple Kelly on the spinning wheel, like and subscribe and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.